Well, as far as I know, it's always been in the family, certainly for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm told that this sort of thing was fashionable in the 1860s, and there were a number of family christenings around that time, and it could have been a present given to one of my ancestors then. Right. It's a nursery rhyme cabinet, so it's clearly for a child. Um, it's painted in a very lively manner with these sort of pseudo-medieval scenes, which take us, as you rightly say, straight into the late Victorian period. A number of artists in the 19th century made painted furniture. There's a whole tradition that starts with Pugin, goes through Burgess, and on and on and on, of people who concentrated on the production of really lavish painted furniture. Now, I'd be lovely to say this is one of those. It, isn't. You know, it belongs to a, a descendant of that tradition. And when one looks at the images, you say, you've got Goosey Goosey Gander, you've got the Black Sheep, you've got the Queen of Hearts, and you've got something. I've no idea, and one needs to do research in a book of fairy stories to find what is going on here. Somebody delivering a letter to a princess, there's a stork. Now, a painted piece like this, wonderfully rich, it's part of, as I say, of a Gothic tradition. But the images themselves, I think, come much, much more from a sort of arts and crafts tradition, the aesthetic movement, and all that love of um, decorative amateurishness that was part of the late 19th century. Presumably you have no idea who might have painted it. Well, somebody suggested rather ingeniously that this was in fact a crane, right. and there of course is water, and that was an obscure signature of Walter Crane, but other people have um, scoffed at this idea. I don't know what you Well, think. it's a lovely idea. I mean, it's a wonderful idea for a rebus, Walter Crane. Yeah. Walter Crane, the great designer, book illustrator, children's books particularly this period, did design things like this. But I think there's a better candidate. Um, there's a man called Henry Stacey Marks, who was a tile painter and decorator, independent artist, who worked a lot with Mintons. And he produced a set of tiles and designs called The Seven Ages of Man, which were in exactly the same sort of costumes and settings as these. There's a slightly curious sort of primitive nature to it, which makes me think it's actually by somebody who was, in a sense, a trained amateur. Now, that's not in any way diminishing the object. It might have even been somebody in your family. And so while one is not saying it's by Stacey Marks, it certainly has his style and his stamp all over it. And that very much fits in with what you say. You know it in your family since the 1880s. Yes, and there certainly was an artist in the family who, even if he didn't do this himself, might have had friends who could have done it. Now, obviously, the lack of a name affects the value. Do you have any idea of its value? Um, well, I've been told about two and a half thousand, but that seemed rather, rather little to me. Well, I'm afraid I think it's about right. Um, if we could say definitely Burgess, definitely Gilbert Saunders, definitely any of the great names, you could say five, ten thousand, you can climb up as high as you like. With no name, I think two to three thousand is about absolutely right. Yes, but quite difficult to replace, I suppose. Irreplaceable, yeah. unless you want to paint another one. Yes. Here's a task. For him, paint the bed that should yes. go with it.